Brought to you by wikivd.com. Lockheed L1011 TriStar. The Lockheed L1011 TriStar, commonly referred to as the L1011 A TriStar, is a medium to long range wide body trijet airliner by Lockheed Corporation. It was the third wide body airliner to enter commercial operations after the Boeing 747 and the McDonnell Douglas DC-10. The airliner has a seating capacity up to 400 passengers, and a range over 4,000 nmi. Its trijet configuration has three Rolls-Royce RB211 engines, with one engine under each wing and a third engine center mounted, with an S-duct air inlet embedded in the tail and the upper fuselage. The aircraft has an autoland capability and automated descent control system, and available lower deck galleon lounge facilities. The L-1011 TriStar was produced in two fuselage lengths. The original L-1011-1 first flew in November 1970 and entered service with Eastern Airlines in 1972. The short and longer range L1011-500 first flew in 1978 and entered service with British Airways a year later. The original length TriStar was also produced as the high gross weight L1011-100. Uprated engine L1011-200 and further upgraded L1011-250. Post-production conversions, for the L-1011-1 with increased takeoff weights included the L-1011-50 and L-1011-150. Between 1968 and 1984 Lockheed manufactured a total of 250 Tristars assembled at the Lockheed plant located at the Palmdale Regional Airport in Southern California north of Los Angeles. The aircraft's sales were hampered by two years of delays due to developmental and financial problems at Rolls-Royce plc, the sole manufacturer of the Tristar's engines. After production ended Lockheed withdrew from the commercial aircraft business due to its below-target sales. Origins in the 1960s American Airlines approached Lockheed and competitor Douglas with a need for an airliner smaller than the 747 capable of carrying a large passenger load to distant locales such as London and Latin America from company hubs at Dallas F.T. Worth and New York. Lockheed had not produced civilian airliners since 1961 with the L-188 Electra. In the 1950s the Electra was designed for turboprop propulsion, which Lockheed had successfully used on the C-130 Hercules military transport. Even after the Electra overcame vibration problems that caused a number of crashes early in its career the market for large airliners would soon shift over to jet airliners like the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8. Lockheed won contracts for jet military transports with the C-141 Starlifter and pioneered very large jet transports with the large C-5 Galaxy with its high-bypass turbofan engines. Boeing lost the military contract but its private venture 747 captured what would become a much larger civilian airliner market for wide-body airliners. Having experienced difficulties with some of their military programs, Lockheed was eager to re-enter the civilian market with a smaller wide-body jet, and their response was the L-1011 TriStar. Douglas Aircraft answered American Airlines with the DC-10 which had a similar three-engine configuration and dimensions. Despite their similarities, the L-1011 and DC-10's engineering approach differed greatly. McDonnell, who had recently taken over Douglas Aircraft, directed DC-10 development on a very firm budget, and cost overruns were unacceptable even at the expense of safety and the conservative approach meant reusing Douglas DC-8 technology. By contrast Lockheed would 
take the most advanced technology of the day and when that technology was lacking. Lockheed created it for the L-1011 in order to give it lower noise emissions, improved reliability and higher efficiency over first-generation jet airliners. The TriStar name was selected in a Lockheed employee naming contest for the airliner. The advanced innovation that went into the TriStar resulted in its expensive price as airlines could get a 747 for slightly more or a DC-10 for a good deal less. The TriStar's design featured a twin-aisle interior with a maximum of 400 passengers and a three-engine layout. The TriStar was originally conceived as a jumbo twin, but a three-engine design was ultimately chosen to give the aircraft enough thrust to take off from existing runways. The main visible difference between the TriStar and its similar trijet competitor the McDonnell Douglas DC-10 is the central tail engine configuration. The DC-10's engine is mounted above the fuselage for simplicity of design and more economical construction while the Tristar's engine is mounted to the rear fuselage and fed through an S-duct for reduced drag improved stability and easier servicing replacement. Lockheed engineers were able to maintain straight-through engine performance by limiting the curve of the S-duct to less than a quarter of the radius of the engine and eight diameter. The S-duct design also reduced the total empty aircraft weight. The research undertaken during the design of the L-1011 indicated that losses of using an S-duct were more than compensated for by the above savings. A further major difference between the L-1011 and the DC-10 was Lockheed's selection of the Rolls-Royce RB211 as the only engine for the L-1011. As originally designed, the RB211 turbofan was an advanced three-spool design with a carbon fiber fan which would have better efficiency and power-to-weight ratio than any competing engine like the General Electric CF6 that powered the DC-10. In theory, the triple spool would produce the same or more power of existing double-spool engines while having a smaller cross-section that would Reduced drag, American Airlines opted for the Douglas DC-10, although they showed considerable interest in the L-1011. Americans' intent was to convince Douglas to lower their price for the DC-10, which they did, without the support of American. The TriStar was launched on orders from TWA and Eastern Airlines. Although the TriStar's design schedule closely followed that of its competitor, McDonnell Douglas beat Lockheed to market by a year due to delays in power plant development. In February 1971, after massive development costs associated with the RB211, Rolls-Royce went in to receive the ship. This halted L-1011 final assembly, and Lockheed investigated the possibility of a U.S. engine supplier. However, the engineering was finalized at that stage in the Tristar's development and its S-duct, which was designed to fit the smaller cross-section of the triple-spool RB211 engine that would have reduced drag was too small in diameter to accommodate an existing double-spool engine. One option presented was potential outsource of RB211 production to Canadian manufacturer Orander Engines. The British government agreed to approve a large state subsidy to restart Rolls-Royce operations on condition the U.S. government guaranteed the bank loans Lockheed needed to complete the L-1011 project. Despite some opposition not least from the then-governor of California Ronald Reagan, the U.S. government provided these guarantees for the rest of the RB211 project. Rolls-Royce remained a government-owned company. Production The Tristar's internal Lockheed model number is L093. The TriStar was manufactured in Lockheed facilities in Burbank and Palmdale, California. Lockheed discovered fairly early on that the TriStar suffered from higher 
an estimated structural weight, engine weight and specific fuel consumption. To rectify this problem and to meet performance guarantees, Lockheed developed a structural kit that allowed maximum takeoff weight to be increased on production aircraft from 409,000 to However, the weight problems affected the weight and desirability of early production L-10-11-1 aircraft, known as Group 1. Group 1 aircraft have an OEW of 252,700 pounds, about 12,700 pounds higher than later aircraft, while Group 2 aircraft have an OEW of 247,000 pounds, some 4,700 pounds lower. These aircraft in general also have different center of gravity envelopes, with the forward center of gravity limit on the early aircraft being more restrictive. At higher gross weights, groups 1 and 2 aircraft are upgradable only to 50 or 150 specifications, although the group 1 aircraft still maintain their operating disadvantages. L-10-11-1 From MSN-1052 onwards a Group 3 aircraft and a fully upgradable to all variants up to 250 specification. Under state control costs at Rolls-Royce were tightly controlled, and their efforts largely went into the original TriStar engines, which needed considerable modifications between the L-10-11's first flight and service entry. The competition, notably General Electric, was very quick to develop their CF-6 engine, with more thrust which meant that a heavier intercontinental DC-1030 could be more quickly brought to market. The flexibility afforded to potential customers by a long-range EC-10 put the L-1011 at a serious disadvantage. Rolls-Royce went on to develop the high-thrust RB211-524 for the L1011-2500, but this took many years. The resultant delay in Lockheed and Rolls-Royce offering a high-gross variant with a longer range, coupled with the Tristar's delayed introduction meant that only 250 Tristar's were sold compared to some 400 EC-10s. Lockheed needed to sell 500 airliners to break even but in 1981, the company announced production would end with delivery of the 250th and last L-1011 on order in 1984. The Tristar's failure to achieve profitability caused Lockheed to withdraw from the civilian aircraft business. The Tristar's rivalry with the DC-10 has been seen as a case study in what can happen when two manufacturers attempt to split a market that simply could not support both aircraft. Lockheed lacked the resources to follow up with several proposals based on the Tristar wing and airframe, including a wide-body twin jet and a stretched quad jet. McDonnell Douglas was also financially weakened and could only develop the MD-11, a refinement of the DC-10 instead of an all-new design. To challenge the next generation of twin jets like the Boeing 777 and the MD-11's failure led to McDonnell Douglas ceasing further civilian aircraft development and merging with Boeing. Technologies the L-1011 featured a highly advanced autopilot system and was the first wide body to receive FAA certification for CAT IIIC auto landing which approved the TriStar for completely blind landings in zero visibility weather performed by the aircraft's autopilot. The L-1011 used an inertial navigation system to navigate. This included aligning the navigation system by entering current coordinates of longitude and latitude. It also had a unique direct lift control system which allowed for smooth approaches when landing without having to use significant pitch changes while on the approach path. DLC helps maintain the aircraft on the glider slope during final approach by automatically deploying spoiler panels on the wings. Thus rather than maintaining the descent, by adjusting pitch DLC helps control the descent while maintaining a more consistent pitch angle. 
using four redundant hydraulic systems. Production also used a unique autoclave system for bonding fuselage panels together. This made the L-1011 extremely resistant to corrosion. Commercial The prototype first flew on November 16, 1970. The crew for that flight was HBD's Ralph C. Coakley and G. E. Fisher. The L-1011 was certified on April 14, 1972, with the first airliner delivered to Eastern Airlines on April 26, 1972. To further publicize the new aircraft, an L-1011 was taken on a world tour during 1972 by famed Lockheed test pilot Tony Levere. In a demonstration by test pilots Levere and Charles Hall, 115 crew members, employees and reporters embarked on the TriStar for a four-hour, 13-minute flight from Palmdale to Dulles Airport with a TriStar's AFCS feature engaged. From takeoff roll to landing and Lockheed touted it as a groundbreaking moment, the first cross-country flight without the need for human hands on the controls. TWA heralded the TriStar as one of the safest aircraft in the world in promotional literature in the 1980s when concern over the safety record of the McDonnell Douglas DC-10 flown by rival airlines was at its peak. The L-1011 has been involved in five fatal accidents, only one of which was due to a problem with the aircraft. Delta Airlines was the type's largest customer. Delta retired its Tristars in 2001 to replace them with the Boeing 767-400ER. Cathay Pacific eventually became the largest non-U.S. operator of the type by acquiring many of the Eastern Airlines examples. When Eastern went bankrupt operating as many as 21 aircraft, Cathay Pacific retired its L-1011s in October 1996 and replaced the type with the Airbus A33300. TWA withdrew its last TriStar from service in 1997 to secure the Japanese market. Lockheed secretly bribed several members of the Japanese government to subsidize all Nippon Airways' purchase of L-1011s. This caused a significant scandal when the bribes were uncovered. The discovered scale to what has become known as the Lockheed bribery scandal led to the arrest of Japanese Prime Minister Kakuei Tanaka as well as several other officials within Lockheed Board Chairman Daniel Horton and Vice Chairman and President Carl Kochian resigned their posts on February 13, 1976. Tanaka was eventually tried, and found guilty of violating foreign exchange control laws but was not charged with bribery, a more serious criminal offense. Crucially for Lockheed the fallout from the scandal included the loss of a contract worth in excess of $1 billion. The Soviet Union at that time lacked a wide-body airliner. Development of their own Ilyushin Il-86 was delayed. Consequently, in the mid-1970s, the Soviets started negotiations to buy 30 Tristars and license produce up to 100 a year. The talks collapsed as U.S. President Jimmy Carter made human rights a U.S. policy factor. The Tristar was also listed by the Coordinating Committee as embodying advanced technology banned from potential enemies thus being a serious obstacle to the export deal. The L-1011 has had recent use by smaller startup carriers particularly in Africa and Asia. These operators mainly do their business in the ad hoc charter and wet leasing businesses. Arta Airlines fleet included over 19 Tristars but operations dwindled to only three L-1011-500s 1001 prior to the company's shutdown in April 2008. Military the TriStar has also been used as a military tanker and passenger cargo aircraft. The Royal Air Force had nine aircraft of four variants. The aircraft were six ex-British Airways and three Panam L-1011-500s. 
All of the aircraft served with No. 216 Squadron and were based at RAF Bryce Norton. The TriStar was replaced in RAF service by the Airbus A330 MRTT under the Future Strategic Tanker Aircraft Program. 216 Squadron was officially disbanded on 20 March 2014 and flew its last sorties with the TriStar on 24 March 2014. Other In the early 1990s Orbital Sciences began to use a converted L-1011-100 named Stargazer to launch Pegasus rockets into orbit around Earth. This venture effectively rendered the small Scout rocket obsolete. This aircraft was also used in support of the X-34 and X-43 programs. NASA performed aerodynamic research on Orbital Sciences L-1011 in 1995. Three L-1011s in the world are airworthy and the Stargazer is the only one in the U.S. Variants the earlier versions of the L-1011 such as the 1100 and 150 can be distinguished from the later models by the design of the middle engine nachels. The earlier version nacelle has a round intake, whereas the later models have a small vertical fin between the bottom of the middle engine intake and the top of the fuselage. The two L-1011 aircraft delivered to Pacific Southwest Airlines were configured with internal air stair doors that led into an entry hall in what was normally the forward lower baggage hold. This was to allow operations from airfields that did not have terminal buildings with jet bridges. These two aircraft were later in service with Aero Peru and Worldways Canada. L-1011-1 the L-1011-1 was the first production model of the L-1011 designed for short and medium-range flights. This variant served as the basis for subsequent variants. This type was purchased by Air Canada, Anna Cathay, Pacific Eastern and other operators, with regional trunk routes requiring a wide-body aircraft. Pacific Southwest Airlines purchased two L-1011-1 models with lower deck seating. This variant was also one of the few wide bodies to have the option for a full height built-in air stair. The L-1011-1 was first delivered to Eastern Airlines on April 5, 1972. A total of 160 L-1011-1 Tristars were built before production ended in 1983. Although the majority of these 119 are 75% of the total were completed during a four-year period between 1972 and 1975, most sales of the L-1011-1 were to U.S. operators, with just three airlines Delta Eastern and TWA taking delivery of 110 combined. A further two aircraft were placed with a fourth U.S. airline Pacific Southwest Airlines L-1011-500 The L-1011-500 was the last L-1011 variant to enter production. It was a longer-range variant first flight tested in 1978. Its fuselage length was shortened by 14 feet and MTOW increased to allow higher fuel loads. More powerful RB.211-524 engines, increased wingspan active load control ailerons, and other improved systems were features introduced by Lockheed to exploit newly available technologies in the late 1970s. The 500 variant was popular among international operators and formed a significant portion of the L-1011 fleet of Delta and British Airways. However, its late introduction resulted in many potential customers buying the DC-1030 instead. The TriStar 500 first flew on October 16, 1978 with the first delivery to British Airways on April 27, 1979. It entered service with British Airways on May 7, 1979.
flying between London and Abu Dhabi. Flying surfaces Lockheed developed some aerodynamic improvements for the TriStar 500 which included a modified wing-to-body fairing, a fillet below the central intake extended wingtips and active ailerons, or active control system. The new fairing reduced drag, while the fillet reduced noise in the rear cabin. The wingtip extensions increased aspect ratio, thus reducing induced drag but resulted in increased bending. The ACS developed to solve this, provided gust alleviation improving ride during flight, reduced fuel burn, and increased fatigue life. Earlier TriStar 500s were delivered with a standard wing. These were later retrofitted with ailerons and extended wingtips. Panem was the first customer to order the 500 with the extended wingtips and active ailerons. MSN 1176, the first for Pan Am, was the first TriStar 500 to be fitted with them as standard cabin. The TriStar 500's maximum passenger capacity is 315 although no aircraft were operated with that number of seats. A typical two-class layout might include 21 first and 229 economy, four or a maximum of 250 passengers. More spacious three-class layouts used on longer routes include 233 with 12 first 32 business, and 189 economy with Delta Airlines. The aircraft is equipped with six exits, two fewer than the long-body Tristars, thus reducing the exit limit maximum. Accidents and incidents As of December 2011, the L-1011 was involved in 32 aviation occurrences, including 11 hull loss accidents with 539 fatalities. Of the four pioneering wide-body aircraft, the Lockheed L-1011 had comparatively few accidents and a better safety record than its competitors. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?